And we're back for day 25 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. Day 25. Oh my god, I'm one quarter of the way through this. This is madness. Insane. I never expected to get this far. I thought I'd give up after the first 10 books. But no, here I am on day 25. That's... That's kind of crazy. Okay. Um, so for day, day 25, this special occasion of day 25, I decided to pick... The World's Wealthiest Losers by Margaret Nicholas. Seems to be an inauspicious book to pick. I believe this actually belonged to my mother. Um, because it's, um, well, first of all, the, 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 the price of the book is in pounds, two pounds, 99 pence, which is, uh, so I guess she picked this up while she was uh, working in London as a nurse. So, that's interesting. So, what's the book all about? Uh, uh, let's go read the back of the blurb here. The blurb on the back. Yeah, that thing. Who wants to be a millionaire? So the song asks. Well, most of us would probably say, probably say, probably, probably, probably say, I do. Bobbing along on a sea of champagne isn't necessarily a guarantee of true happiness. Yeah, right. The stupendously rich often have to pay a high price for the privilege. They say money can't buy you everything. In this book, you'll find those who wanted it, needed it, who lived and breathed it, those who would have killed for it, those who found and lost it, those who had it and didn't know what to do with it, and those who would rather have had who would rather have had done without it altogether. So, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and the front cover is um, with Marilyn Monroe, which is, um, I guess says all it needs to say or or or, or doesn't i don't know uh i don't know anyway let's flip to this it's um it's kind of a tiny book but there's plenty of text on every page so it's a, it's a it's a very very dense book for for the amount of pages it has okay we're stopping on page 71 and this particular chapter is about uh queen soraya Queen Soraya. That sounds like a video game name, Soraya. Who is Queen Soraya? I, do, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But apparently she's a wealthy loser. I'm not up on my history. Or my current events. Or knowledge in general. Huh. Anyway. <clears throat> Queen Soraya. Both the Shah and Soraya loved sports. They swam, rowed, and sailed together, played volleyball, and learned how to water ski. Like any other young couple, they enjoyed parties. Fancy dress balls, private film shows, and picnics. Late in 1954, they set out on a series of state visits to Britain, Germany, and the United States. Everywhere, Soraya was admired and photographed, and everywhere people were asking the same question. When was she going to give the Shah the son and heir he desperately needed? There could be no official coronation of the Empress until a crown prince had been born. After four years of marriage, the cradle remained empty. To show his faith in her, Mohammad Reza told Soraya that he intended to have a crown specially designed for the em sorry for his Empress. One day he took her to the Me Mali Bank, Mali Bank, Me M E L L I. Meli? Meli? It's, it's a name, so... Let's just, go, let's just go with Meli. That sounds silly, Meli Bank. One day he took her to the Meli Bank, the national bank where the crown jewels are kept, and helped her to choose... To, and, helped her to, and helped her to choose... And helped her to choose the precious stones to go on it. Sarai comforted herself with the thought that her own mother had to wait six years for her arrival. Doctors, she consulted, assured her that it was quite possible that this kind of thing ran in families. She must be patient. Worry would only make things worse. But the Shah, ruling over such a volatile country and with many jealous and ambitious men around him, could not afford to wait. At 35, after 15 years and two marriages, he still had no heir to the throne. He still had no heir to the throne. He gently suggested to his queen that they should both undergo medical examinations. She agreed, and on the 8th of December 1954, they were booked into the Presbyterian Medical Center in New York. Presbyterian Medical Center, New York. Hmm. 
I don't know. That scene, that I don't know why that thought. Something about that just strikes me as strange. I don't know. It was just, huh. And then, and then the thought was gone. She said, huh. Huh. No, it's not. It's not coming back. <clears throat> for three days, they were go. For three days, they were both given a thorough checkup. All tests proved that they were perfectly normal. The doctors saw no reason why they should not have children. Queen Sarai was told to go home and be patient. For some time, the Shah did not refer to the subject of his heir. They threw themselves into good works and charitable causes, hoping the problem would resolve itself. Hoping the problem would resolve itself. On 3rd of April, 1957, he appointed a new prime minister, Dr. Manachur Egba. Oh boy, I have, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Dr. Manachur Egba. Egbal. Dr. Manachur Ekbal, a university professor of whom great things were, of whom great things were expected, he was full of new ideas. A few days after his appointment, Dr. Ekbal asked for an audience with the Shah. He spoke quietly but firmly. "Your Majesty, if I am under, if I am to undertake reform in your name, your own authority must be unassailable. Either the Empress must present you with an heir in the near future." or the dynasty's future must be assured in some other way. Soraya by this time had given up hope. She knew that if she was to hold on to her marriage, she would have to suggest a solution. At first, she shook... Uh, uh, names, God. <sighs> names screwing me up. At first, she thought of Princess Shaznas. Shaz Shaznas? Shaznas? Uh, thought of Princess Shaznas, the Shah's daughter. Could she be nominated for crown princess? There was also the possibility of choosing one of the Shah's half-brothers. And, yeah. And I forgot to mention, it actually starts at a sentence and ends at a sentence as well, which is great. I love it when that happens. No starting in the middle of a sentence or any crazy things like that. <clears throat> anyway, that was, um, that was one big wall of text. Um, and I kind of kind of screwed up on the names here and there because as soon as I saw the name it was like oh 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 and I, I just um, could not maintain my read because of that and also because I'm terrible at narration but you know that's another thing entirely <coughs> <coughs> cough anyway um, that was the first pass um Shall we go for a second one then? Yes, we shall. We shall go for a second one. Then we go shall, shall go for seconds. <clears throat> Both the Shah and Soraya loved sports. They sat, they swam, rode, and sailed together, played volleyball, and learned to water ski. Like any other young couple, they enjoyed parties, fancy dress balls, private film shows, and picnics. Late in 1954, they set out on a series of state visits to Britain, Germany, and the United States. Everywhere, Soraya was admired and photographed, and everywhere, people were asking the same question. When was she going to give the Shah the son and heir he desperately needed? <clears throat> there could be no official coronation of the Empress until a crown prince had been born. After four years of marriage, the cradle remained empty. To show his faith in her, Mohammad Reza told told Soraya that she intended to have a crown. Oof, God, that name screwed me up. To show her faith, to show his faith in her, Mohammad Reza told Soraya that he intended to that he intended to have a crown specially designed for his empress. One day he took her to the Meli Bank, the national bank where the crown jewels are kept, and helped her choose the precious stones to go in it. Soraya comforted herself with the thought that her own mother had to wait six years for her arrival. Doctors she doctors she ah. doctors she consulted assured her that it was quite possible that this kind of thing ran in families. She must be patient. Worry would only make things worse. But the Shah, ruling over such a volatile country and with many jealous and ambitious men around him, could not afford to wait. At 35, after 15 years and two marriages, he still had no heir to the throne. He gently suggested to his queen that they should both undergo medical examinations. She agreed, and on 8th of December 1954, they were booked into the Presbyterian Medical Center on New York. 
For three days, they were both given a thorough checkup. All tests proved that they were perfectly normal. The doctors saw no reason why they should not have children. Queen Sarai was told to go home and be patient. For some time, the Shah did not refer to the subject of his heir. They threw themselves into good works and charitable causes, help, hoping the problem would resolve itself. On 3rd of April 1957, he appointed a new prime minister, Dr. Manachur Ekbal, Dr. Manachur Ekbal, Ekbal, Ach, Ekbal, a university professor of whom great things were expected. He was full of new ideas. A few days after his appointment, a few days after his appointment, Dr. Ekbal asked for an audience with the Shah. He spoke quietly but firmly. Your Majesty, if I am to undertake reform in your name, your own authority must be unassailable. Either the Empress must present you with an heir in the near future, or the dynasty's future must be assured in some other way. Saraya by this time had given up hope. She knew that if she was to hold on to her marriage, she would have to suggest a solution. At first she thought of Princess Shaznas, the Shah's daughter. Could she be nominated Crown Princess? There was also the possibility of choosing one of the Shah's half-brothers. Of choosing one of the Shah's half-brothers. Okay. Second pass. Hmm. Bit better than the first pass. Again, slowing down my reading to the point where I can actually read ahead a bit and um, <clears throat> not be so screwy uppy but the names again just kind of oh god it's a name oh god i don't know how to say this ah run around screaming ah run back screaming ah and um and so forth <clears throat> so third pass yeah we'll go for a third pass third pass of this Both the Shah and Saraya loved sports. They swam, rode, and sailed together, played volleyball, and learned to water ski. Like any other young couple, they enjoyed parties, fancy dress balls, private film shows, and picnics. Do any other young couples go to fancy dress balls or private film shows? I mean, I, mean, I'm, I guess they would enjoy it if they had a chance to. Sorry, it's just wondering out loud about that. I also need to pick my nose. This is what I sound like when I pick my nose. No, oh, my bae. Just finding some nose goblins. You know? Just... Oh. I'm so glad nobody's watching this. This will be really disgusting for people to listen to. It's like, oh my god. Like, you, you're picking your nose in front of millions of people. You should probably stop that. Okay. That's out. Ah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Where am I? Oh yes, Barcelona. Late in 1954, they set out on a series of state visits to Britain, Germany, and the United States. Everywhere Sarai was admired and photographed, and everywhere people were asking the same question. When was she going to give the Shah the son and heir he desperately needed? <clears throat> there could be no official coronation of the Empress until a crown prince had been born. After four years of marriage, the cradle remained empty. To show his faith in her, Mohammad Reza told Sarai that he intended to have a crown specially designed for his empress. One day he took her to the Melai Bank. Melai Bank. Melai Bank, the national bank where the crown jewels are kept, and helped her choose the precious stones to go in it. And helped her to choose the precious stones to go in it. Sarai comforted herself with the thought that her own mother had to wait six years for her arrival. Doctors, she consulted, assured her that it was quite possible that this kind of thing ran in families. She must be patient. Worry would only make things worse. Sorry, worry would only make matters worse, rather. But the Shah, ruling over such a volatile country and with many jealous and ambitious men around him, could not afford to wait. At 35, after 15 years and two marriages, he still had no heir to the throne. He gently suggested to his queen that they should both, that they should both undergo medical examinations. She agreed, and on 8th of December 1954, they were booked into the Presbyterian Medical Center in New York. For three days, they were given a thorough checkup. All tests proved that they were perfectly normal. 
The doctors saw no reason why they should not have children. Queen Sarai was told to go home and be patient. For some time the Shah did not refer to the subject of his heir. They threw themselves into good works and charitable causes, hoping the problem would resolve itself. On 3rd of April, 1957, he appointed a new prime minister, Dr. Manasho Iqbal, a university professor of whom great things were expected. He was full of new ideas. <clears throat> A few days after his appointment, Dr. Iqbal asked for an audience with the Shah. He spoke quietly but firmly. Your Majesty, if I am to undertake reform in your name, your own authority must be unassailable. Either the Empress must present you with an heir in the near future, or the dynasty's future must be assured in some other way. Soraya by this time had given up hope. She knew that if she was to hold on to a marriage, she would have to suggest a solution. At first, she thought of Queen. <clears throat> Sorry. At first, she thought of Princess Shaznas, the Shah's daughter. Could she be nominated for crown princess? Sorry. Could she be nominated crown princess? There was also the possibility of choosing one of the Shah's half brothers. Okay. <clears throat> and uh. Yeah, that was the third pass. Going, it went really, really well until the end, where it's like, oh my god, I'm excited, it's going to be over, and then I, I um, screwed up towards the end. Again, because of names. Uh, anyway, that was, that was, that was, that was day 25. Day 25, oh my god, yay, day 25, yay, high pitch screaming, ah! And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Tomorrow, uh, back to the doldrums. Day 26. Ah, celebrations are over. Back to the hard work again. Anyway, yeah. Um, oh, yes. Uh, uh, th that was Day 25. The World's Wealthiest Losers by Margaret Nicholas. Uh, tomorrow, Day 26.